This is Hannibal here from TheHannibalTV.com, and I'm with John Johnson, also known as Porkchop Johnson on the Independent Circuit. And the reason why I'm interviewing him today is because there was a big story on him in the Wrestling Observer this week as he's friends with Ace Montana, Maria Manic, who is Ted's Ted Hart's girlfriend. And I'll let I'll let you tell the story, but basically when Ted was arrested a little while ago on the drug charges, part of the condition of his release is he needed somewhere to stay. So you're the one that offered him a place to stay. That's correct. Well, basically what happened was um, uh, Maria, like I said, needed, needed a place to stay for Teddy. So she originally called, she called Ace. He, she asked if he knew somebody. And then that's what Ace called me. Like, hey, we got a situation. Uh, Teddy Hart's going to need a place to stay. Do you think you have to make some room for him? I said, absolutely. So I went and picked him up about a couple weeks later from the jail cell. And then. You see, really appreciated at first with the fact that basically I was a quote unquote savior, and then this would be a good opportunity for him to kind of clean up his life and everything. And like most people already know about him, yeah, he has his quirks here and there, but like I kind of talked about him, like talked him up to him to be uh, maybe the old jail time and everything kind of traumatized him, so like I kind of brushed it off at first, like, eh, whatever. So, was he offering to pay you any rent money, or is this just, you're just being nice letting him stay there? Uh, actually, uh, Maria is actually the one that actually paid part of the rent, or the uh, storage fee, or whatever, for him to stay for the month, so. Because he, I hate to say, he basically didn't have a pot to piss in, or one to throw out out of, so. So, what was the issues you had w with him staying there, I guess, from what I understand, from what I was reading, he w you work as a merchandiser, so you have posters from uh, various companies that you put up in stores and I guess he had strangely posted some of these up on walls with tape and he'd been right. in, in the room and stuff. That's correct. Well basically what happened was um, for some reason I, I'm not sure why maybe he was on drugs or whatever he decided to go into my room and then uh, take some of my belongings and then post all sorts of displays first throughout the living room. I remember home one night and like what the hell is this like, oh i decided to set up this display to show my appreciation for da 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 like first i kind of a little miss like first of all you shouldn't be in my room for the get-go but i got in that though looks pretty nice though so and eh, what the hell then the next day he decided to do uh set up the displays in the um kitchen area over here same thing or what the hell you doing in my room stay out of there but it looks good so I gave him another pass. And the next thing you know, he set up some displays in the bathroom behind me. And for some reason, he set up some more displays in the uh, bathroom in the living room. And that's where basically expected everything. Where I couldn't open the cupboard. I couldn't open the refrigerator. I couldn't even open the day on um, the medicine cabinet in the bathroom. So, like, every time I open some, this stuff falls over. And eventually got to the point where I couldn't find my cell phone charger. I couldn't find a spoon. And get this, he actually put Clorox in the freaking refrigerator. Can you believe that? Who puts Clorox in the freaking refrigerator? I'm like, what the hell are you trying to do, poison us? That's strange. And I guess you said, I guess the tip of the iceberg was you went away for a weekend and you'd asked him to clean up and basically you came back. It was yeah. more of a mess. Yep. It looked like, almost looked like he didn't do a damn thing, like. And originally, I had the deadline for um, I believe Monday morning at 6 a.m. I actually came back a little bit earlier by strategies like, let's see what you do. If I give him some extra time, he's actually going to take advantage of it, just uh, slack him or whatever. But I came back home around Monday afternoon, about 2 or 3. Now this is, and I gave him one more chance. I'm like, you have until midnight. If you're not, then you're out of here. Man, that came around. Nothing. I'm like, out. So that's the point, I guess, where he moved back in with Maria. Um, yeah, actually, what happened was, um, because Maria kind of had a feeling like he wasn't going to follow through with his um commitment because she was actually there, like in case he decided to resist my request for him to leave the premises. So she actually there to help convince him, like, hey, you had your chance now, get to stepping. And then, um, I guess they went to the whole state of the hotel for the night. 
I remember I was getting ready for work the next morning, and then for some reason, Maria called me, and she barely got two words out for something that the phone hung up. So I went over to the hotel, find out what the hell's going on. As soon as I got there, I guess uh, they had some kind of physical altercation or something, because I know um, Teddy had a bloody nose. I was like, Teddy, why is your nose bloody? Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. So I'm like, Where, where's Maria at? So I went to Maria, just trying to find out what the heck is going on. And basically what happened was um, he actually stole money from her, and she basically called him red-handed. And he basically said, like, give me my money back. Oh, no, no, I didn't take it. I swear to God. And then I guess, like, she went up in his face, and then he tried to restrain her, and then she just... Pardon my friend, she slapped the shit out of him. Well, that's a that's a weird situation. I guess it came out in the news today. He's been released. I guess this is because Maria's likely dropped the charges. Is more than likely. And I guess we can only assume that because he's stuck in Virginia due to the other charges, he's probably going to be moving back in with her in all likelihood. More than likely, unfortunately. And then, uh, then uh, going back to the um, to that day when um, where she basically stole he stole money from her, and then I, eventually I got involved. Like Teddy, just give the, give Maria back her money. And then one thing led to another, and then he decided to make a run for it. And then because he had her phone, I basically had to call the police on him. And then basically within a minute, they pretty much hauled ass and they apprehended them. And then, for I understand, they didn't actually take him to jail that night. But I think a couple of days later, there was some house arrest with the. I'm not familiar with hostel rip. I'm assuming it had to do with me kicking them out. I'm assuming that's the reason why he got arrested for the second time. I believe it's March the 4th or 5th. So he's in a bit of a predicament, too, because can he even work in the U.S.? Does he have a work visa to get a job there? Uh, that I'm not sure of. But he's basically stuck in Virginia till the trial for the other charges. Is that the situation? Exactly. He's basically stuck here until the end of the trial, and then with the whole coronavirus, I mean, who knows when the trial will even start? For I understand, um, the trial they had originally they had scheduled for this month was actually pushed back to June, and for what I know, he pushed back even further. So I don't know. So what was it like having him in your house overall? <sighs> it's okay at first, but it just part of my friendship turned out to be the worst fucking experience ever. I'm like. It's bad enough to like you move my stuff around, go on to my room, and then when um when they take him to his appointments, say it's at ten o'clock or something, he just such such, such scatterbrain. Like I tell him, if I tell him to be ready by ten, you end up leaving the dig on apartment by or house or whatever by ten thirty because he just oh I gotta get this, gotta get that, gotta get that. Like Teddy, I freaking told you to get ready by ten. Come on, man, Jesus Christ. And what was your reaction to the situation that I guess happened with Maria and Ted that led to the latest arrest that I guess he's been released from jail now from after six days? Shocked, but not all that surprised. I kind of had the feeling like, as a girl, you take him in. I mean, this day, you don't get into an argument. He's going to wind up laying hands on you. And I don't know. So you're not surprised that uh, something happened after he moved out of there? Yeah, I, I, as soon as I found out, he, he basically moved in there. Like, it's only a matter of time, unfortunately. So about your wrestling career, how long have you been wrestling for? Uh, this um, it actually be my fifth anniversary this April the 25th of this month. Did you ever meet Ted before this uh, in the wrestling industry? Nope, this is actually my first time meeting him. Okay, so for you, it was like kind of cool to have uh, a guy that's had some success in wrestling. He's been signed by some major companies staying with you. So I guess that was mainly one of the reasons why you agreed to it and to help out your, your other friend, Maria. Exactly. Are you, where do you stand on what she said about Ace after contacting him to help her and then kind of dumping on him? I think she brings up a fair point about him um, posting the video online, but at the same time, like, why are you condemning the person that basically rescued you, but essentially defending the person who basically slapped you out of the head? I mean, does that make any sense to you? None of the whole situation makes any sense to me. I, I hope that uh, it can get sorted out, but... I, I see Ted's side, too, in a way that if he can't work, 
and mm-hmm. like he has no money, as you said, right? Other than borrowing from people, um, that's got to be like a stressful situation too for him. Yeah, but at the same time, you don't bite the hand that freaking feeds you. You just don't no. do that. You care for people. No, exactly. All right, and for you as a wrestler, if anyone wants to check out any of your your match videos or look you up on social media, where can they find you? Uh, social media, they can look look me up under uh, John Johnson on Twitter at Atomic Dog ninety eight, uh, Instagram at Atomic Dog ninety eight, and there are a few matches scattered about YouTube. So far, I only have a, my YouTube channel, although that could change pretty soon. And what's your most famous match? If you want, if someone were to look up one match of yours, what what would you recommend? Um, I'll say probably my most famous match would be my match with uh, Brian Rivers for the School of Morton I had back at last October. So you've met Ricky Morton, I guess, if you if you've wrestled at his school. Yep. Have, have you heard anything about his health? I heard he had a health issue. With his yeah, health. just recently I saw about that, and, and then I saw the uh, he quickly recovered for it. Thank God. And what's he like as a person? Oh, he's a great person, man. I learned a whole lot from him. What's the most uh, valuable lesson he's taught you? I'm going to try and do a shoot interview with him soon. So, just curious what he's like. I guess the biggest thing I got from him, like, if you think you're going. What's the old saying? If you think you're going slow, slow down even more. Because I now, had a bad habit kind of going a little bit too fast. And then I learned from him, like, oh, he makes a lot of sense right there. And you said, uh, I read in that Observer review that Ted actually showed you some of his matches while, you, while he was staying there. And did Ted yeah. give you any advice for wrestling? Uh, <laughs> probably the funniest thing, he told me, like, man, are you going to be part of our heart dynasty or whatever? You got to get you some kick pads. Like, uh, probably a little bit too big for kick pads, but whatever. <laughs> whatever you say, I guess. <laughs> well, and you also sent me some pictures, I guess, a little bit about, I guess, some of the mess you made just to explain to people, like, what you were dealing with. I understand that there was some other stuff, too, but you didn't take pictures of the initial stuff with some, like, Nintendo posters or video well, game posters. Yeah, essentially, most of the pictures I take were... Um... I guess he just made more of a mess. Like, I guess he's trying to make more displays. Who the hell knows what that one there's mind of his. And I guess one of the issues with that is because those displays are for your job, the way he was posting them up was kind of yep. ruining them. And so you actually got heat from your shoot job because oh, yeah. you had to order more. Exactly. I damn, I got fired over there, believe it or not. You I got fired? No, no, no. I almost did, though. Okay. I my supervisor. He was able to order it pretty much up. Uh, Ship a reorder the next night. Like, thank you, Jesus. Because I would lost my job. Well, thanks for helping him out. As as that's nice of you as a fellow wrestler to try and help him out. I, I'm sorry about what you had yeah. to deal. With. I, I always tell people, had jokes. They're like, no, I don't know. Here, I was a damn fool. <laughs> Well, I just hope for Ace's sake that if he gets any more calls for dis- distress. He just calls the police or tells her to call the police from now on because she I saw her video. Police, uh, yeah, she ain't going to call the police. She got the, what's it called, the stock roll syndrome? Like, and by, by the time she does call, decide to call the police, fortunately, it'd probably be too little too late. And yeah. Who knows if this stuff keeps up? You, we could very well see this as uh, on the show uh, Dark Side of the Rain if them two don't get their act together. Uh, well, let's hope this this latest stay in prison helped. And it's a sad situation, but I'm glad that you didn't get fired over the whole thing because it would have been terrible if you'd lost your job because it's really hard to get a job these days. Yeah, did right. Yeah. All right. Thanks for talking to us. Any any final comments for the fans here? I do want to make one statement though, because I remember somebody asked me, um, even though all that, do you hate Teddy? Like. I can actually honestly say, like, no, I don't hate him or even dislike him. I just wish he could just clean up his act. I'm hoping he pulls through because if he does it, much as I hate to say, we could very well be with reading his obituary pretty soon. So it's all hope and pray for the best. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. 
Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.